Could Arsenal be plotting a move for Julian Alvarez? Yes, people. Why? Welcome back to another Arsenal Trans News video. As always, if you absolutely love being kept up to date with daily Arsenal Trans News vids, this is the place for you. Make sure you subscribe down below, Moro to 4,000 subscribers, and hit the bell notification button so you never miss a future video on this channel. It's a win win for both of us. And let me know in the comment section your thoughts on the rumours linking Alvarez to Arsenal. Let's not waste any more time and get straight into two. We've got two tweets today. First brought by the Red Side of London stating this. Arsenal have inquired about Man City's 23-year-old striker, Julian Alvarez. Understands the striker wants more minutes and is on exit ramp. Arsenal are willing to pay 50 million, but City value their striker at 70 million pounds. And this was followed up by Fabrizio Romano, the great Fabrizio, right? Stating this. Understand Julian Alvarez's camp does not consider any loan deal as possibility for this summer. No chance. Also, Man City extended his contract as they are ha very happy with Julian. And off the back of this Fabrizio Romano tweet, everyone just assumed that Julian Alvarez to Arsenal talks were dead and buried. But I don't necessarily think that's the case. Look, guys, I'm going to come out early and say that I don't believe Alvarez will go to Arsenal. I don't think that's a possibility. A, I don't think Man City will sell him to Arsenal. And B, I don't necessarily believe Julian Alvarez will leave. But what Fabrizio Romano is saying here doesn't necessarily state that Julian Alvarez is going to stay at Man City. It's just saying he's not going out on loan. It's very similar to the following Balogun situation. Do you remember Fabrizio Romano saying that Balogun won't go out on loan again? That's not saying that he's going to leave Arsenal. Or that's not saying he's going to stay at Arsenal. It's just stating that the place either getting sold or staying. I understand the situation Alvarez is in, right? Because Alvarez is an absolutely brilliant footballer. He had an amazing first season at Man City. It shouldn't be understated because let's not forget, right, that a lot of players come into the Premier League, especially from River Plate of all places in Argentina. It takes an adjustment period to get used to the league. But Alvarez was fantastic. One of the best, one of the better players in the Premier League last season. It's just such a shame that he's obviously a striker and he's stuck behind Erling Haaland, the best striker in the Premier League. So he's going to find his minutes limited. Genuinely, if, if Julian Alvarez was at the majority of the teams in the Premier League, I want to say, genuinely, any team other than probably Man City, he'd probably even get into Liverpool's team right now, maybe Arsenal head of Jesus, he'd start for most Premier League teams. So I understand why the guy wants more minutes. Look, he's 23. He's not 19 years, years old anymore. The brother's 23 years old. He's going to want minutes at, to play football, man. He doesn't want to sit on the bench anymore. So I understand it. Now, the thing that really excites me, less so Arsenal interested in, uh, in Alvarez. I understand Alvarez is a brilliant footballer, but I also understand the likelihood of Man City selling to Arsenal is very slim. What excites me is this point right here that the Red Side of London states, Arsenal willing to pay 50 million. Now, the fact we're willing to pay 50 million for a player means that Arsenal should have 50 million more to spend this summer, which really does excite me because I've, I've come out before and I've said this, guys. Look, we've done brilliantly to bring in Kai Havertz, Timber and Declan Rice. That's £200 million spent already. But I also said that's not enough. Our problem isn't the fact that our starting 11 is weak. I genuinely think our starting 11 is one of the best in world football. The problem is our squad depth. We need to sign a lot of adequate replacements. I made this point previously on my channel, right? I said there needs to be a point where if, some, if one of our first team 11 get injured and the replacement comes in, we can't be nervous. And I made the point that if Martinelli gets injured and Trossard comes in for him, I'm not sitting there nervous. I'm not sitting there quivering, thinking, oh my God, that's a massive hole in left wing. That's not the case. Equally, if Ben White gets injured and Urien Timber comes in, no Arsenal fans going to be sitting there shaking, thinking, oh my God, that's a complete worry where we've got a massive hole at right back. However, if Saliba gets injured and Rob Holding comes in, everyone starts getting a little bit worried. Do you get what I mean? So it comes to a point where, I know it's cliche, but you need two good players for every single position. And obviously, it's impossible to have world-class players, multiple world-class players in every position. That's very unlikely to happen. But we've got to have adequate replacements. And the fact Arsenal have only signed three players and look like they're going to ship out six, seven, eight potentially this summer, we're going to need more to add to that squad depth. I'm looking at two positions I want to address. For me, a central defensive midfielder. I've been crying out for it. Especially if Thomas Partey does end up leaving Arsenal, we're going to need someone adequate to replace him. Moises Caicedo, Chouameni. We've heard more reports about Moises Caicedo to Chelsea today. It looks like that one's taking longer than it probably should have. That's the cue for Arsenal to sweep in, man. We saw what happened to Mudrik last summer, sorry, last January, where Chelsea swooped in last second and stole him. Why not do the same thing for Caicedo against Chelsea, man? Why not? Chelsea taking their time, they're umming and ahhing over the transfer fee, swoop in and get that one done. That's what I think. If not, too many, we know potentially he could be on the market. Mbappe is a bit of a hot topic right now. If, if he was going to go to Real Madrid, Real Madrid need to raise funds. And one way could be to sell Valverde or Chouameni. So there's many options for us to address that central defensive midfield position. The other position is striker. Now, I've covered that previously on this channel. Obviously, my recent videos regarding Vlahovic and Balogun. I spoke about how Arsenal are in dire need for me of a top-class goal scorer. Now, Jesus, I love him to bits. 
I love what he does. I think he's a really tricky, agile footballer. I think he's a flair footballer. But Jesus is not an out-and-out -out goal scorer. I think everyone can understand that. Can he get you 10 plus goals a season? Yes, absolutely. But can he get you 20? I doubt it. I seriously, seriously doubt it. So we're in need of a striker. Now the thing is, is Alvarez that type of player either? Because I think Alvarez is a brilliant footballer. Only 23 years old as well. I think he's fantastic. I think his link-up play is brilliant. I think he's got the ability to score some brilliant goals. Remember last season against Fulham away from home, he scored a fantastic outside-the-box curl curling finish. But is he going to bag you 20 goals a season? I'm not sure either. For me, if I'm Arsenal Football Club, I'm looking at a pure goal-scoring striker. And it's, it's hard to come by. Now, there's, there's options out there. Of course there is. But I'd obviously like to supplement that goal-scoring striker with other abilities, such as being a target man, such as scoring with his head, with both feet, etc. There's certain man out there that I've been crying out for, Ivan Tony. I think he's the perfect type of striker for us, man. Great link-up player. Great with his back to goal. Great running in behind. Can link up as well. Bags you 20 goals a season. I think he scored 20 goals for Brentford last season. And that's Brentford. Imagine him in the Arsenal team with Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli, Trossard. Players like that supplying him. Declan Rice next season. You can only imagine the sort of things he'd get up to in this Arsenal team. So, look, I think there's options out there. I think there's a route, route to success for Arsenal. And the most exciting thing for me is, genuinely, I can picture a, a world where we can win the Premier League. We were this close last season, guys. Genuinely this close, man. We bring in a world-class defensive midfielder to replace Thomas Partey if he goes and a world-class goal-scoring striker and we win the league. Genuinely, I believe so. Because I think Man City are going to fall off next season as well. I think that's the case. Look, these guys have won the Champions League now. They've won the Premier League three times in a row. You're going to fall off. I made this point about Liverpool when they fell off this season. I said, look, Liverpool won every trophy that exists. They've won the Champions League. They've won the Premier League. They've probably won the Club World Cup. FA Cup, Com uh, Community Shields, Carabao Cup. They've won it all. It's like completing a video game. Yeah, you can complete it again, but have you got the same ambition? Have you got the same drive to complete that video game again? That's going to be Man City next season. Man City have won the Champions League now. They've done the treble. They've completed football in that sense. Are those players still going to go into training with that same, that same tenacity, that same 100% dedication? I'm not sure. I'm genuinely not sure. And some that, that squad is aging for Man City as well. Look, De Bruyne is reaching 32, 33 now. Like, I can't expect him to be at the top of his game forever. The man seems to defy age, but that's not going to last forever. On the flip side, you've got Arsenal, you've got Erdegaard, Saka, Martinelli. These guys are young. They're going to get better with age. So genuinely, I'm not saying that Man City are going to have a complete fall-off next season, but I can see route where Man City slightly get worse next season. And if you're Arsenal Football Club, you've got to capitalise. You've got to capitalise while it's there because Chelsea, I think, will be back to their best in, in the coming future. Maybe not necessarily next season. I think it's one season too soon, but... With the money they, they've got available to spend, I expect them to go up and run up the ranks. Liverpool will be back to their best sooner rather than later. Then you've got Man United as well. Maybe next season's too soon for them, but the season after, they could be at it. You never know. They're making some good acquisitions. Onana's a brilliant goalkeeper that could br they, they could bring in, for example. So if you're Arsenal Football Club, you've got to capitalise because genuinely, we'd even have to have Haaland this season. But if you gave us Ivan Tony this season, I think we win the league. Genuinely, I think that's the case. So if you're looking at it from Arsenal's standpoint, we're two positions away. A world-class DM and a world-class striker away from winning the Premier League, in my opinion, and competing on all fronts, including the Champions League as well. That's just my thoughts on it. But the reports today is that Arsenal are linked to Julian Alvarez. I don't necessarily think the deal will go through. I'm going to come out here and say it. I don't necessarily think Man City are ever going to sell to Arsenal in the near future ever again, to be honest with you guys, especially considering how close we were to pipping them to the title last season. But the good thing for me is the fact that we're linked to strikers A, and B, we're willing to spend around 50 million. We've got more money to spend. That's exactly what I want to see at Arsenal Football Club. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like down below so it gets out to more people in the algorithm. It really, really does uh, get appreciated by myself. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts on Alvarez to Arsenal. Do you think the deal will happen? Or do you think Arsenal will target someone else? And if so, who is the perfect striker you want to see Arsenal bring in? I've said it. I want Ivan Tony at the Emirates. Let me know if you think it should be someone else. And as always, if you're new around here and you love the Arsenal daily content, make sure you subscribe down below. I'm to 4,000 subscribers and hit the bell notification button so you never miss a future video on this channel. It's a win-win for both of us. I appreciate you guys all for tuning into this video and I hope to catch you all in my next one. Take care.